Is the tripod dead? Sure, a tripod works for basic shots, but who wants to be basic? You don't need basic, you need Blockbuster. And that's a job for a Platypod. The Platypod is your go-anywhere, do-anything flat tripod base. Its compact design helps you discover unique angles that you could never reach with a typical tripod. So, whether you're bringing up baby, driving Miss Daisy, or with your beasts of the southern wild, you can capture big budget footage and stills for a fraction of the time and money. So go ahead, shoot the next Rocky or Birdman. Or on the waterfront, the Platypod is equipped to grip uneven surfaces and hang from just about anything. When tripods go low, the Platypod goes lower. Its flat base reaches the lowest possible angle, resulting in truly inventive shots that can't be replicated with traditional equipment. And if you feel like adding a dramatic overhead angle, the Platypod has you covered. Just strap it or screw it in, and you're ready to go within minutes. The Platypod is constructed from aircraft-grade aluminum and titanium. Yeah, the stuff Air Force One is made of. So, it's durable enough to travel with you from Chinatown to Casablanca and everywhere in between. If you only take the tripod, the story ends. You wake up the next morning with nothing but basic footage. Or you could take the Platypod to a museum, or on an elevator, or strap it to a tree, or hang it on a bench at church or put it on the ground and get incredible blockbuster footage. Who are we kidding? You should totally take the Platypod. The tripod is not dead, but it needs a sidekick. The Platypod. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, we're back. Scott Kelby here with Eric Kuna. Thank you for going through, letting us reset yeah, our right? stuff. Hopefully it's working now. Uh, we got some shout outs. Yeah, we got people all over the world tuning in. We got a lot of people commenting on the weather situations that we're at. Oh, so we yeah. got Norm G. Greetings from uh, Virginia. We got uh, Mike saying hi from Ari uh, sunny Arizona. Sunny. And then Deb saying hi to Scott uh, Eric and Christina from a cool California. And then we got Lenworth saying, hey, Grid Nation. Lenworth. And then Su Susie Q's greetings from a freezing eastern shore of Virginia. Uh, we got Nina from Pennsylvania saying hi. Jox is saying surf's up. Uh, and then In Cheeky. Kauai. Yeah, so Cheeky Nando is saying hello, everyone. Cheeky Nando. And then uh, Rose is saying hi from New Zealand. We got Becky from Goodyear, Arizona. Christian from Austria. We got Barbara from Northern Cal from a sunny Northern California. We got Paul from Australia, uh, Marianne from uh, London. We got Lars from Denmark, Dave from Sweden. We got people joining us all over the world. <laughs> Everybody's here and today. Speaking of all over the world, you're going to be all over the U.S. soon with your uh, tour, right? Yeah, I've, uh, my next four cities are. Uh, this is my ultimate photography crash course. Going to be in Houston. San Diego, LA, and Phoenix. So it looks like, I think it's Phoenix and uh, San Diego in February. Yep. yep, Phoenix and San Diego in February, and then Los Angeles and Houston in March. So hope you'll come out and spend the day with me. Uh, it's, it's a blast. We have a great time, and uh, you'll learn a lot. And if you don't, it's 100% money back guaranteed. So what do you got mm -hmm, to lose? Mm -hmm. Come out and party. All right. That's all I got. So we got Ready? some more critiques here. Let's right? go. Hey, Let's we're looking go. at the beautiful Sanibel Island, Sanibel Lighthouse in Florida. Ugliest thing you've ever seen. Okay, let's roll on. So let's take a look at our images here. All Three right. images. Eric's, we're on the clock. Got it. 
Got it. All right. All right. <laughs> I really like this image. This is really nice. It's, it, it's, it's simple. Clean. It's, it's clean. Long I mean, exposure. Oh, yeah. Love no. the clouds. I love the spinning uh, fan on the back yep. of the windmill. This is a really nice, really nicely crafted shot. Very interesting. So mm. this is not so awesome. Well, number one is, I don't know if you can see, but the photo is bent. So it has barrel distortion. Yep. So it is literally curving out at the viewer. Yep. And if you look at the left side and the right side, the buildings probably in real life are not curved like that. They're and probably that's a, straight. That's a very um, simple fix. Yeah, very easy fix in Lightroom or, or Photoshop and Camera Raw. Uh, also, you you need a longer exposure. Yep, so that's what I would, that's to get that water too. nice and silky and more reflective, you know, another couple of minutes of, of, of would have been nice. But really, the, you got to fix that barrel distortion problem. That's that's pretty severe. This doesn't have any of those kind of problems, but I don't know where to look. Uh, that's exactly what I would have said. Like, I don't know where to look. Yeah, look. I just, clean. Like there, I've got the subject. It's clean. It's clean. It's, it's clear. Yeah, I know. Here, I, I don't know. Yeah. This one's bag like that confusing. one. Bag that one. Fix that one. Frame that one. Boom. Yeah. All there right. You go. More All of right. that. More of that. <laughs> more of that. Last more one, of that more last of one's that. good. All right. Let's see what we have here. Here we got three shots. All righty. Right. One, two, three. All right, I think we're two out of three. I, I think this is an interesting shot. That is very interesting. And, and it looks like it was done during some kind of a reenactment, which is, yeah. that's kind of cool. And it has flames, so it's flames, near, near flames and dear are good. to my heart. You know, Eric loves a good flame. Yep. Uh, this is pretty good. I like an interesting like interesting light and interesting subject and interesting outfit and the little light in the Pull background some of that light off the bottom area there off yeah you know, know what it is it's it's the decolletage yes, area yes, is a yes. bit bright, bright in the decolletage and even that hand over there a little bright too yeah a little bright on the hand a little bright, a little bright on the decolletage maybe, maybe it's a, like a half stop all right now this one this one's kind of funky first off look at the floor it, it the floor is, is angled down like you're going to, that chair, did they, were they all holding yeah, that chair sliding from sliding? Off. So I think that there is some kind of a composite issue here uh, in your compositing in that the floor looks like it's at a like 60 degree angle. Like, whoa! Yeah, it almost looks like they're hanging on to each other back there and that guy should be falling off the yeah. seat. Yeah, so I, I would just work on that. The rest is, is okay. It's kind of a cutesy, you know, interesting kind of photo. Um, I don't hate it or anything like mm -mm. that. The fact no. that his foot is cut off is not good. His foot is sliced right in the middle, which is just, that's a big no-no. But, uh, oh, oh, there we go. Well, that was probably from the one before, though. That was. But, <laughs> but stop. pretty stop. good stuff. Stop. Not a bad stop. photographer. You're doing some good stuff. Eric can't stop his phone. But we got to move on. There we go. We got it. All right. I'm going to have to open these three. Hold on. Let me open these in camera raw because they're not big enough. Okay, here we go. All right. So some sports shots. First one is a sports shot. Looks like Rutgers versus Michigan. Mm -hmm. Little guitar player. Okay. All right. Th this one's just a mess. I, I, it's just a messy, messy shot. And I know that you like the it's fact a moment, that the, right? the player's up. You, you kind of got a what would, could be considered a peak moment of action. Yes. But you don't have good separation from the background. So, number one, the worst thing in a sports photo is empty, empty. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say seats it's just in the background. Very, uh, yeah, it looks like practice. Like yeah, it looks like was this done in practice? You yeah. know. So it's it's. You got but one you're right. part if right. If you came in a little closer, yeah, you started dropping. You know, you, some you got to be at like out. so. What are you, they were, at? you were at f two point eight one thirty five, but you're at one thirty five. The f two point eight alone isn't going to get you in a background that's out of focus. You need to be at 400 at f2.8, and then you're going to get that background out of focus. And even at 400 at f4, yeah, it would be out of focus. Yeah, yeah, really. I, I think people at think f4 would get you. Yeah, I, I think really, if you had to choose which one is more important, zooming in tight or yes. low f-stop, it's because at f5.6, if you zoom in with a 400, you're going to it's going to be out of focus as anything. You don't have much separation from the background. The uh, the second shot here is. Uh, the concert shot, eh, it's a guy playing. It's not a peak moment of action. He's not doing anything else. A guy playing the guitar, standing there on stage, happens all night, all the time at a concert. 
you know what this if i was at the concert i would see this guy playing that guitar wearing that shirt with that hair all the time in that same kind of pose he's not doing anything super cool interesting it's just yep you're at a concert so that's that one just get rid of that um this one is actually a much stronger photo than the other one um it, it is the, the the background is more out of focus you have more separation for the players uh, you're in at 200 millimeter, yeah, 200. and yeah. your f-stop is higher. You're at f3.5. I don't know why you're at f3.5 if you could have been at f2.8. So I would keep it at f2.8. The background might might have been a little uh, more soft, but this is just a stronger picture all the way around. You've got all the players in. That's the strongest of the three. Yeah, yeah. by by far. But I mean, uh, obviously, you you know what you're doing. I think really this might be somewhat of an equipment issue. Uh, get a 1.4 tele extender getting closer. Ooh, that's and, good advice. So uh, you can get a 1.4 tele for about 500 bucks. Don't yes. get the 2x because yeah. you'll lose and a stop don't, of like, light. And don't like get so, so consumed with like it won't be sharp anymore. Or It'll, something be sharp. Like that. It'll be 1. sharp. It'll be sharp. 1.4 will be plenty sharp. You see along the sidelines of guys that are putting uh, images on the cover of Sports Illustrated and they've got 1.4 tellies on all day long. All right, so here we go. Three, two, two one. one. All right. So all right. not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, next. Oh, I got to do the uh, camera raw thing again. Sorry. All right. Ooh, I do Ooh. like that shot. I like that a lot. Ooh. I don't know. It's not. It doesn't look like it's from the London Eye. It could be a drone. I don't know what it is, but I do like it. Uh, I love it. The Charles bridge in mm -hmm. Prague. Very nice. Okay. Got to fix a little post-processing stuff here. This is nicely done. So, but you have a glow. At that last you one. have a black glow all the way around <laughs> yeah, everything. A little too heavy. Uh, I, I talk about how to fix these glows quite a bit. It's, it's a Photoshop thing and get rid of those. And the rest is, it's a really nice shot. I, I love the lights and I think you shot it at a high enough f-stop to mm -hmm. get the little sparkles. This is a nice shot. Just yeah. those glows are killing, kind of killing you. And uh, this is I nice. It's like a long that. exposure. It's, it's kind of cool. The, uh, the tower bridge there is, is bent. So, you know, you, you might just want to... It's easy enough to fix, yeah, right? Gonna, yeah, so I'm just going to give you an example here. Let's just open it. A little... Oh, credit didn't open. Uh, let's open. Oh, there it did oh, there open. It All right. Oh gosh, it over opened. So here's what I would do just real quick. Let's duplicate the layer. Maybe drag this corner and pull that side of the bridge up. That's it. Maybe to right there ish. I, and that's pretty quick. Yeah, show them the before. And but after let me show that. you the before and after here. See what I mean? It's like a little thing, but it's a thing. And then when you've done that, you might want to pull it out just a hair because you did. Oh, my. Uh, it's a Photoshop thing. Every once in a while, Photoshop just gets buggy, and this is it, right? You're seeing it. There you go. Pull it out just a hair so you don't make it look too long and thin. Look at that stupid stuff. Come on, Photoshop. Yeah, Photoshop. Anyway, there you go. But uh, uh, very nice. This is like one of my favorite photographers today. I yeah, like what you're doing. Uh, that first image I really yeah, like, too. We saw that earlier. We don't have to go there. Okay. So good job. Right. Nicely done. Good on you. Right, right. Cheerio. Okay. Oh, we're going to have to look at these three photos. Here we go, in camera raw. Somebody went to Lisbon. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, there's not much here, unfortunately. And you're, you're in a beautiful city, the home of Cheeky Nando. Yeah. They're, they're just kind of, I was in Lisbon. They're, they're like not, historical documents of your trip. Yeah, they're like, I was there. And, oh, I looked up and there's these birds up there. And oh, there's a cable car. It's and technically exposed. Yeah, I mean they're okay. Yeah, but the, really these are like kind of snapshotty. I'm I'm sorry. Well, even there, yeah, like you're there's. I know you're trying to get me to look at the cable car, but the cable car is not positioned in a way that. Yeah, like and leads I'm I'm kind of looking it. over here. Yeah. Yeah, the leading lines are leading, leading lines you away are from the cable like car, leading you away from the cool thing. Yeah. And then the streets kind of. Uh, Darkly exposed, and then you got that bright sky behind you that kind of yeah. brings you up there. Well, you you, you um, know what I would it do? It brings me over the cable car, so I'm going go past to, the cable car. Go to 500 car. PX, type in Lisbon, and look. In fact, let's Lisbon just cable let's, car. let's just do that. <laughs> let, let me go to 500 PX. Give me just a second to get there. and uh, Yeah, because I think you I'll really could you show like, the difference between like, here's the uh, shot. that It was there. You're in that yeah. city. 
All right. Try like so, Lisbon with cable card. Yeah. So look, I'm 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 on Lisbon. This is the 500 PX page, and you can see there's some really interesting shots here. It's shot in beautiful light. And some interesting stuff. There's a cable car shot where there's just a little bit of light. Unfortunately, they made the yeah. background out of folk. I mean, uh, it's black and white. Color. So that's kind of meh. But uh, oh, they did it again. They took uh, the color out. This is not a good. But example. But you know what though? Let's let's just use this one as okay. an example. This is so much stronger of a shot. Yeah, because like the leading I go light, you right go into right the cable to car. it. And, and it's pointing towards the cable car. It's sucking you down the road. Yeah, the, even the tracks or everything leads you to it. It's obvious this is a shot of the cable car. I think just uh, it all looks a little snapshotty. So and Definitely, that's a word, snapshot. Yeah, it looks snapshotty. And you don't want to take snapshotty looking pictures because those are they're not really images. They're kind Boy, of. I mean, you, you should yeah. go to your portfolio. You got some great shots of Lisbon. <laughs> Well, I was with Chiki Nando, and if you stand near yeah. Chiki Nando, good things happen. Yeah. Okay, so, all right, so let's roll on, but... Oh. Hey, what that proves is if you want to take some good photos that nobody else has taken, get on a plane to Lisbon. Holy <laughs> moly, that's probably the worst 500px search I've ever seen. Yeah, because usually 500px, like, you yeah, come like up over, with boss over, stuff. Yeah, it's like overshot, Yeah, here's stuff. Here's like, oh, it went away. Like, that's a nice that's Lisbon a nice shot. Set. Yeah. You know, and that's a very popular tourist attraction that's leaning to the left. Uh, <laughs> so anyways alright so anyways <clears throat> oh there we go we need a little bit of work we need some work there we gotta take a break now now we're being told can we do one more we're so quick alright we're these. gonna do one more alright here we go here we go <laughs> so one two Ooh. and three alright so so this this is nothing <laughs> I'm You're sorry. just playing with depth of field. Yeah, yeah, this is just like... That's like playing with depth of field. It's yeah. like you're just playing with it, and you're going, hey, I focus on something in the foreground, and something's, something's out in of, the background. Oh, background. It's there not particularly interesting or fascinating I or I like anything. that middle one, though. There's something about um, the middle one. This one is, is interesting, interesting because the reflection of the flag is bent, so it's, yeah. it's kind of a little bit interesting. interesting. Uh, yeah. Far more than the other one. This has got a big poll going. I think it's a line, this is the Library of Congress yeah, in Washington, D.C., with a Pretty big, sure. ugly poll going through it. Couldn't you have moved up a step? Well, I, I think they're trying to like play with the, the no, like, have, depth and is, it doesn't work. Like, no. Especially with depth of field, too. Now, So you've reversed it there, where you've got the thing in the foreground out of focus and the thing in the background in focus. Yeah. That's a very hard thing to do. Yeah. You know, like that's a very it's hard very technique. very hard, and you don't see many people you pulling don't, it off. No, not a lot of people pull that one and off. And you made the building black and white. Yeah. So the, the, the Library of Congress is not white like that. It is a beige-ish kind of color. Yeah, this is, uh, so here's the good news. You know how to use your camera. Yep. Right? You understand depth of field. Yep. You're yep. just not making great You're depth of field it. choices. You're playing yeah. with it. Yeah. And so I, I would stop worrying about the camera stuff. It looks like you got the camera stuff down. Yeah. Now let's, let's look at composition. Composition. And yep. let's take a break. Yep. Don't go away. We'll be right back Sweet. on the grid. Hey folks, Moose Peterson here. I want to invite you on my journey, the science of wildlife photography, my brand new class that's going to help you marvelous wildlife photographers really step up your game and hopefully infect the rest of you to come up and get involved in wildlife photography. I've got a ton of information I'm going to share with you. Things like how do you get close physically? How do you think about background? How do you tell stories? How do you sit there and use everything you learn before you get in the field to make the most of that time with that critter to make the most important, great one photograph that will reach out, grab people's heartstrings, tell a story, make a difference for our wild heritage. So come along and join me on this great class exclusively to be here on Kelby One.
This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Hey, we are back. Uh, two real quick things. Number one, I, I did an interview uh, last week with the Lens Rentals podcast. So re lensrentals.com has a podcast, and uh, they called it How to Do Everything with Scott Kelby, but that's their name. And the reason they called it that was we didn't talk about anything. We were all over the map. We talked about Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> we talked about music. We talked about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We talked about everything. It was one of the most fun interviews I have ever done. I've done so many interviews. That was one of my most fun. If you go to my blog on Monday, all right, so Monday, what was Monday, the 20th? Yeah. Go to on my, my blog would be on, uh, what month is this? January 20th, 2020. There's a link to it there, or you can just go to the uh, the the uh, Lens Rentals uh, podcast. Or you can go to his Twitter. Or you can go to my Twitter feed. It's there, too. Yeah. But we, we, we didn't talk that much about... But you know what? If you go to my blog on Monday, I'm, I'm going to read you a, a comment here. I'm going to read it. I'll get it real quick here. And I'll read it from somebody. Now, I thought it was going to be bad when it first started going. I'm like, uh-oh. I thought that they hated it, but actually, they liked it. So here's what it I said. I actually listened to it while I was driving. Did you listen to it? Yeah. All right. I had so, driving back and forth, back and forth this weekend. AJ wrote, this podcast contained no technical info on Photoshop or Lightroom. This podcast contained no suggested camera settings for us photographers. This podcast contained no insight whatsoever on what Canon intends to do in the future. Yet this podcast was one of the more fun podcasts I've had the pleasure to listen to. Great job, Roger and Scott. I give it five stars. So anyway, that was very nice uh, that... Uh, that uh, uh, they invited me to do it. We oh, had yeah. such a great chat. It was one of the, literally one of the most fun. So and let it run in the background while you're retouching. And they're definitely one of those places where um, if you're looking to try out gear, oh, it's a great yeah. source. They in are fact, awesome. I know that you wanted to know, but I, I just used them this weekend to rent some gear. Did you? Yeah, you're always yeah. renting gear. Yeah, I did. He's very loose with money. Some of those pictures I showed you were actually from video. They weren't from stills. One more. One more thing. If you're, watch, if you're one of the people that sent in portraits today... Go get this book. So this is a brand new book from Chris Orwig, who is a wonderful mm -hmm. author and instructor, and it's called Authentic Portraits. And it is terrific. It's brand new. It just came out. Uh, it, it is Chris Orwig is a wonderful photographer, mm -hmm. a great people photographer. And this book is hardcover, by the way, which is nice. Hardcover book. You can go get it. Uh, Amazon, wherever. Oh, what is it? Tw uh, the Kindle version is 26 bucks. The hardcover is 30. 30, bucks. 30 for a hardcover photography book is cheap. Look at the ratings. Do you know how hard it is to get a five star rating on anything on Amazon? Mm -hmm. Because literally, you get one person that puts a four star and it knocks it a half knocks star it. off. It's weird. Their math is crazy. But anyway, we're going to be. Uh, and uh, speaking of great ratings, Susie Q actually says. The crash course, your crash course, is wonderful, all in caps. Oh, well, thank you, so, Susie. And um, Becky's saying that she looks forward to seeing you in Phoenix. Sweet, sweet. We'll yeah. see you there, Becky. Thanks for coming. Yeah. All right, let's look at some more images. Here we go. Start the, start the counter. All right, doing it. Three shots. Here's the first. Second. Third. All right. Uh, all I right. think we got two out of three. This is very nicely done. It's probably, that's my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite. I like the depth of field. I'm not sure if you're using flash. I don't think so because I'm looking at the eyes. That's usually where you can tell if there's an artificial light. If you've got very strong catch lights in the eyes, that usually means you use flash. Mm -hmm. I don't see it. Uh, I'm going to see if I can zoom in. If, uh, if did, I zoom in, it. it's going to get did, messy, you did right? A great job. If I zoom in, will it get messy? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. going to get messy. Okay. So uh, I don't think it's flash, but it's, this is very nicely done, and I like the way you brighten the face a little well, in isn't, post. But isn't that the purpose, too, if they did use flash? You want to not to make really it look, tell that you use Yeah, the I yes. ideal. Yes. All right, so now, this shot, I think, is nicely done. Um, I would maybe lower the brightness on the fence a little bit, you know, just so it's there and you can see that they're on a fence, especially the pole that's going through her body. Mm -hmm. I, I think I would just remove the pole altogether. Uh, you've got pieces of fence you can pick up and Which, move over yeah, that you're, you're so right. you that easily. Just also just and I will run it. over time if I do this just right. Lessen it, you know. But let, you could do this. We're like in take it down a Where's little bit. Photoshop here. Come on, we're in Photoshop. So what you could do is, and I'm, this is going to be kind of crude. Since what I'm going to do. You got those highlights that are bringing your eye down there. Grab this. Look at that. Photoshop's not even showing me where my selection is. Thank you, Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And then just kind of 
you know, get rid of that and mask it in a little better than I'm doing, you know, and then yeah, mask this is, it. This is down and, and Yeah, this is a super quick idea, but it would be very easy to get rid of that pole going through her body. Uh, the rest is pretty good. Uh, a little hot on the decolletage there, a little bit too much yeah, light. Just bring it up. But, but anyway, this is still pretty good. You're, you're in, the, in good shape. It's the other one I'm concerned about. This one. This one. This screams, I used a flash. <coughs> Pardon me. It is screaming big time. First off, you lit the ground. Yeah, and that's where your eye then goes. And there's no reason to light the ground. Just go in there with a brush and fix it. Now, if you'd have gotten the light close enough, you'd have had natural fall off. It would have gone where her face is brightest and it gets darker and darker. But you, you've lit this so evenly. Her foot is, is really bright. Um, I'm, I'm a, this is crude, and we only got a second to do it. But you could take a gradient. Yeah, 39 seconds. Darken it. You could do this. Drop it in here. Oh, other way. Like this. Just kind of drop it in here so it's not so bright. And maybe drop it a little bit more. Maybe some of the highlights. It, it should be more Already like that. It's starting to take form. Maybe even a little higher. Mm -hmm. So let me get rid of the overlay and show you before and after. Uh, wrong button. <laughs> see how bright that is? Yeah. And see how your eye then goes up. Yep. Your eye goes up. You, then you start looking at where you wanted. So I was using the graduated filter tool, which basically is a gradient. All right, there you go. So and, we have a dark gradient at the bottom. you did that in 37 seconds. Yeah, so 37 seconds and you got and your thing fixed. All right, moving on. We are cranking through them today, baby. Up football, love it. Um, that's a nice shot. It's a peak moment of action. I really like the way the ref is in there. You got the guy signaling <laughs> Number touchdown. Number seven back there going, yeah. Yeah, it's a little messy, but it, it's, it's a great moment. And really, yeah. what makes a great sports photo is capturing that peak action yeah. uh, moment of action, which you did. It almost looks staged. It does look staged, does it? doesn't it? Looks it? Staged. it I mean, looks staged. It looks too perfect. Yeah, so uh, anyway, that's, you were in a good spot for that. Uh, this is a nice shot. You know, you're in nice and tight. Let me just make it bigger here. You're in nice and tight, two eyes and a ball. Uh, it, it's not a super peak moment. I mean, it's not like, wow, but I like that you're in so tight. So, yeah, I think that's a keeper. Yeah. This is probably kind of the best done on some level, but at the same time, I can't see the ball. I, if the guy on the ground's got to have the ball, right? I mean, the guy going to the ground. I don't think so. I think the guy, yeah, the Virginia Tech guy, has the ball. Somewhere buried back there. Because the guy... Yeah, you're right. He's, he's pulling, pulling him. him. Right. And he doesn't have the ball. Well, we I can't think see we can't yeah. see eyes we or a ball. We can't see a ball. So while, while I like the separation from the background and stuff, yeah, it's, it's, it's not your strongest of the it, three. But yeah, here's the you thing. know what you're doing. You go you're, back to that, the, they could be in a fight because you don't see the ball. Yeah. He could just be grabbing him down yeah. saying, I'm going to get a penalty. Your other, yeah. uh, your other two are great, especially the posed one that you set up with your friends. No, just kidding. <laughs> No, that, that good job. No, that's, really a, good, that's, cool that's a good photographer. Like, they're not, they're, like they're, so they're getting it done. Mm. Mm. All right. These uh, are three nice overcooked yeah. shots. So it's just too much post. Now, these are nice photographs. But they're nice photographs. That's what I would say. Like, they're just a little too much. Yeah, they are 25% too like, much like one of those clarity where you needed to sleep on it and then go back yeah. and like tone it down like by <laughs> half yeah your your clouds are too punchy like the clouds look fakey it all looks kind of that hdr almost you're on the verge of the bad hdr but you're in its neighborhood you're driving yes. through and you're thinking where to park you just need to take out like uh, 33 same thing with this here's what i would do here i i i Leave all the rest of the clouds alone and just paint the the mm -hmm. the, the uh, contrails or the what do you call it the yeah. smoke from it's like the you from went the crazy on clarity. yeah leave the because this would look so much better and so much more realistic if the other clouds weren't affected mm -hmm. it's just too much post well, these create, are nice shots it would create separation too between the background and that green clouds. looks too green it's too vibrant yep. it's all the HDRE type of stuff now you may have not used HDR it could be like tonal contrast and nick or tonal contrast and luminar yep. they're not these are all good shots do not get me wrong except we got some dead trees here that are kind of yeah, ugly yeah the green almost has a incredible yeah. hulk feel to it it looks like that's not really a green and then it becomes distracting it's just a little so little much 33.3% yeah yep, yeah maybe yeah eric i, I said 25 i'm going to have to go with eric's 33 what do we got here chapa got a chapa there 
Monu uh, Washington Monument. Yep. yep. And a bird. Yep. These are three shots. This one is my favorite, That's but my favorite. it might be because Eric and I like helicopters. It's also, it's kind of like you were talking about, like the clouds aren't overcooked. They're not overcooked. It's simple. And, and I, the, ro uh, the rocket, look at me, the helicopter is like kind of pronounced in the shot. You know, you can kind of, and the blades are still moving like that. Yeah. It's yeah. Kind of cool. But it's, I, it's not a great blade movement. If Larry Grace or Moose or yeah, any of those yeah, guys, it'd, it'd be like a little ah, bit more. A more. little bit more. This is kind of a touristy kind of thing, and uh, this is a bird. The bird y shot, your yeah. camera, Your photography skills are very good. This is, this is the most interesting. I, I really like that first one. Yeah, I, I like the first it. one. These does two. It a little well, bit you know more what it is? In the, the color blades. is great. The color. Yeah. You, you've got right that nice gradient behind you. You got nice light on the on the chopper. It's not a chopper. It's a that's a Coast Guard, right? Yes. Would be a Hilo, right? Yeah. You got nice light on the Hilo. You have to be careful because people Actually, watching that. That's not. That's is that Coast Guard or is that? Um, it's red. Air Force. Well, no. See the insignia on the side. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I believe that's an Air Force. You think? It says U.S. Coast Guard, Coast Guard. Eric. Oh Sorry. my goodness. I don't know. Anyway, what do you, what it's do a I bird know? shot. It's okay. That's One okay. Do more of this and less of this other stuff. But you're, you're a good photographer. Right. You know your stuff. You know your, your camera. You know your tools. Just go find some more interesting stuff to shoot, and I think you'd be in good shape. Let's see what we got. Hey, look, a vacation photo with my phone. That's kind of nice. That's nice. That's nice. You got a nice gesture. Yes. You got a real nice gesture. You got Love real nice thoughts. This is a good yeah. one. This is absolutely nothing. This is, I'm on vacation. I, and I pulled I out my cell phone. What I can't believe there is that that and that shot yeah. are in the same, those aren't even in yeah. the same like, like realm. Like this is a nice, I'm a photographer shot. This is literally cell phone on vacation. With green water. Yeah. And cute little girl sad scene it's somebody's daughter her face is too dark look how bright it is right here yep look how dark it is up here where it matters it doesn't matter here at all it yep. super Reverse. matters up here so i don't know if the black and white's doing you any good here either the last one is your your strong one do more of that yeah and let me just you go in here with the adjustment brush brighten this up quite a bit yep more than I'm doing and here. Darken up that other. And then hit new and go darken this area down here that is not necessary, does not need to be. Already you've gone in and 30 I think seconds. You, I think you could actually do that. Uh, let's click on this other one and bring this brighter. It's still, I'm up a full stop and it's just starting to get there. So. But show, show before and after, because like in 30 seconds that just switched yeah, it a lot. Yeah, so. It's not, I mean, it's, it's not really, going to be like, but look but at look that. But look how you got to repaint look at with that. the line. Yeah, that's harsh what I did on her. On her. Uh, no, I'm, no, no. I, but yeah, yeah. you're just trying to show like, yeah, that's what you're talking about. Bringing that light up to the yeah. face. And and these are very common mistakes that, that people are making. Obviously, you're not, you're not the first one today to do that. Let's take a look at those. Oh, I got to open these in camera raw. Let's do that real quick. Oh, now that's nice. Mm. And that's nice. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, mm. we got a photographer here. Oh, this is very nice. Ringer. This is just, these are all really good. Beautiful use of light. Draws your eye to the right place. That, that little bit of yellow against the blue. And you want to be there. You want to know about it. That like, looks that's like a, a frame I don't even from need a movie. I don't need any backstory. Yeah. I don't need anything. I don't need to know your woods. motivation. or yeah. I don't need any of that stuff. That's a cool shot. This is a really cool shot, a really good use of black and white, and the ultimate leading line shot of 2020. That is leading line shot. That right is there. just so like when you say leading line, that's everything's pointing to that person. Yep. And Everything you're like, draws Why are you they in? standing in that corner? And this is such a nice long exposure shot. Now, I'm going to say, and I think I'm right, that they went and put a gradient in all those windows. I do not believe that gradient was in those windows. And good on you for doing it. Good job. Cool. I'm impressed. It is cool. Really good. Best photographer so far. Really nice stuff. All good. And after the break, we're going to look at some more. Don't go away. We'll be right back. That was good.
What if I told you there's a workflow out there that was so dead simple that it fully automated everything down to just the need to press one button? All of your images will be in exactly where they're supposed to be without you thinking about any of it. That's the workflow that I designed in this course. I'm gonna be going over exactly how to fully automate the entire workflow, and once this is done, you never have to think about it again. It's gonna know exactly where to put your images, exactly what hard drives and what folder structures, exactly how to find your images, and then we're gonna take it a step further to show you a workflow where we can completely ditch your laptop, ditch your hard drives. You could be halfway across the world, and with your phone or an iPad that I have here in front of me, have your images, the full resolution files, be backed up to your desktop drives at home. It's one system, it's dead simple. That's what I'm gonna cover in this class. It's gonna be a wild ride. Come check it out here at kelby1.com. Hi, I'm Ibadi and X Perella, and I'm here in downtown Los Angeles. Have you ever been out on a busy street scene? and you get out there and there's so much going on, you just don't know where to start. You get really frustrated, you make some snapshots, but they're so lackluster. Well, what I'm gonna teach you are the very secrets that I use all the time to make great photographs from some of the most ordinary scenes imaginable. You'll learn in this class how, by just carefully observing and watching things sort of play out in front of you, visual miracles can happen, just as a result of you just staying in place and seeing life play out in front of you. And this class is for more than just people interested in street photography. This is a way of how you see the world. So come check out my class and learn something brand new. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free, and we even have a special audio-only version, too. So sign up today. Hey, we're back, uh, me and Eric. Yay. Hey, just one thing. I got a new class coming out this week, and so we have a new class coming out every mm -hmm. week at Kelby One, but my new class I'm really excited about. It is about making movies all in Lightroom. You're not going to use any other software. You're going to shoot your video on your camera mm -hmm. or your phone. You're going to bring it into Lightroom, and I'm going to show you how to make. Now, I don't, I don't mean that we're making Star Wars. I mean like we're making a two-minute movie about your business. You're going to do a behind-the-scenes video. Movies for photographers to help you promote your business, to do a wedding video, something like that. It is going to blow your mind. Let me tell you how good it was. Juan, who edited the class, came over and said, I had no idea that Lightroom could do all this stuff. <laughs> Nobody does. It's, I'm so excited about this because so many photographers buy a digital camera and they list as one of their big things. It's got to have 4K video. It's got to do this and all. And then they don't do anything with it. They don't edit it. And I ask them, why don't you edit it? I don't want to learn Premiere Pro. You do not have to learn Premiere Pro. You don't have to learn Final Cut. You don't have to learn Avid. You're going to be able to do the entire thing 100% in Lightroom and save out a high-res HD movie to put anywhere you want. It's coming up. That's Thursday? Wednesday? When's it, when's it release? It's going to release tomorrow. So Thursday is generally when we release classes. So tomorrow, it's my all-new class on making movies all in Lightroom. I'm really excited. Let's look at some more pictures. Here we go. Hmm. <sighs> All right, so you're doing one thing really good, which is you're not really shooting down on the flowers. Yes. You are at their That's height, a good which is kind of good. good thing. These are not, you know what it is? None of these are really pretty flowers. No, I, I mean, you can't really tell. I mean, that kind of looks like you've like sat like, like, I don't know, like some kind of, like a, I look like a, a brownie? Cra crappy brownie, like on the middle of like this yellow plate of yeah. flower. You know, you can't really tell what it is. And it's really kind of just harsh, very yeah. harsh. And, and I would rather see that first flower in focus. Yeah. Then well, again, that's... that goes to that whole thing. Like we yeah. were talking about earlier, when the, when the first thing isn't in focus, it it's freaks, very yeah. hard. It's, it's, you can do it, but it it's can be very done. hard. All right, this one. These are just ugly flowers. Now, I, I don't mean like they're super ugly. Ugly but light, too. Yeah. It, this, not, not flattering this is, light This one's flowers. a mess. And this is harsh light. Harsh light. But you're, you're doing one thing right that everybody else does wrong, which is mm -hmm. shooting. So now, let's do this. Number one, let's look for absolutely beautiful flowers. 
you go to the florist and buy them. You can go to a, almost any florist in America I know because I was, did a tour where I was shooting flowers. And if you want a beautiful, pristine rose, mm -hmm. a Gerber daisy or whatever, they charge you $1. It's $1 almost always cash and carry. If you tell the florist, I'm going to photograph this flower, you will see the florist almost always would take me back into the cooler and go, no, not this one, not this one. And they will pick a perfect flower for you, and they're only going to charge you $1. Why in the world would a florist take the time? Do you know why? Because florists did not get into the florist business to get rich. They got in it because they love flowers. And yeah. you're going to photograph the thing that they love and they care and they're passionate about it. You will come out of there with a perfect rose, a perfect daisy, whatever it is. Take it in your backyard. Set it up. Make the background out of focus. Put nice greenery behind it. Get that separation and shoot it in beautiful light. Wait till it's a cloudy day mm. or overcast or shoot it under a tree. Do something to make it beautiful. You, you kind of got the technique. You just It's like you're photographing ugly people <laughs> as a portrait yeah. photographer. You got ugly flowers. Go get some beautiful flowers. I think you've got the camera stuff. Yeah. It's the other stuff. Yep. All right. All right. Now, I'm going to try to get to a few more, but we're, we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're really cranking through them today. Okay. So let's take a look at what we got here. Oh, we got to open them in camera raw. Sometimes these come in really small for whatever reason. All right. One. I like this. Mm -hmm. That's kind of creative. Mm -hmm. uh, a little too light on the hands, of course. Yeah, that's a, Both the hands theme. are too bright, but I kind of kind of like it. You could really, you know what you could do? Take the radial tool. <laughs> hit, hit outside. There we go. Not inside. Mm -hmm. And kind of focus some of that light where it belongs. And you could even almost go a little darker. In fact, and, let's keep it off that. And that really... Uh, Right there, just pulled all that light off the hands. Yeah, so just that that's like 15 seconds, but you can see you could make this a... I, I might have gone a little too far with the darkening. Well, but, you're trying to over-accentuate to show you yeah. the technique. I but mean, the, I like this a, shot. I like what you yeah. tried to do, and I think you did a nice job. Uh, same thing here, but you know what? I, I want to see this closer. Now, this could be just personal opinion, right? Uh, but I want to see it like more... Like, I don't want to really see the edges. Ooh, I like yeah, that. that yeah. So a little cropping, and I think you got a killer shot there. Good photographer, though. The yeah, first, good. the first one's kind of meh. It's got the, you know, you've lessened the what you call it, um, lowered the contrast for like an Instagrammy look. It's all right. Uh, I think the other two are really, really strong. So I would yeah. go more with this creative stuff. This is just a straight ahead headshot. It's it's not bad. Uh, there's nothing wrong here. You backlit it. Uh, the lighting looks nice. There's nothing wrong. It's just not a particularly captivating image. But still, uh, it's still a good job. Good job, good job. That's what we say to our doggos. Let's hit cancel. And yes, discard all the changes. All right, good job. All right. What do we have here? Well, that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I like the colors. Yeah, it went the other way. Yeah. Ooh, ugly dead tree. Yep. Okay, forget this one. This is just ugly. Eh. This just has way too much sky. So, so I'm going to ask you your, your, this question as you're watching this. Which is more interesting in this shot? I need to see the shot. Which is more interesting, the castle or the sky? If your answer is the castle, you need to show a lot more castle. Well, definitely the on this day, it is the castle. Yeah. And if you'd waited a little longer, you would have a lot, got a lot more lights in the city. So it's just kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. However... That's interesting. I like where you're going with this. This is kind of interesting perspective. You're looking up. This is kind of That's good. The best one. You do have a bit of glow around the edges here. I think maybe you darken the sky, which is perfectly fine. You got a little bit of a white glow all the way around. That's easy to fix. But anyway, you see where I see, I see where you're going. All right, real quickly. Up. Oh, hold on. It needs the uh, camera raw treatment. Well, that's kind of cute. Right. That's, that's, that's very cool. clever and cute. I like it. This is an interesting building, but you used a wide angle lens and it's it's bowing out at me and that is kind of driving me nuts. Now this just may be me, 
but it needs to be like in so it's well, not it's, bowing it's, out it's and then recropped. With no intention. Like there's no reason for it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip this shot. It's, it's kind of meh. First one was awesome. Look, this is really great and yeah. clever. And what you know what it is? You have an image that makes people smile and go, "Wow, that's cool." And then this is a, a building, and that's some tracks or uh, overhang. Yeah. The first yeah. one was awesome. This one's kind of nice from a it's graphic-y nice. Yeah. The middle one, eh. And the top one, yay. So more top. More of the first Less one. middle. And I see where you're going with Maybe that other the one. Third so could be okay. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got. Okay. Okay. Okay, we got some uh, kind of boring shots here. <laughs> Look, this is good photography stuff. Good technical like, photography. Uh, good, yeah, good oh, oh, it's crooked, though. Oh, um, oh. Good time of day. Is, you, oh, yeah, but look, it's light. crooked. The horizon is line crooked. is bad. All right. So once Much you better. fix the horizon line, you got good clouds. You got good foreground. This is, a, is technically on the money. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a boring shot. I mean, it, it, you did it right. You did everything right. I can't, I can't fault you for it. it. But you're basically relying on the clouds to carry the whole shot. Like, it's like, if those clouds weren't there, you wouldn't even show it to anybody. The clouds are nice. I think it's a composition thing. Because I think if you went in, these, you come these rocks closer? are so yeah, big. Like somewhere in there. Yeah. I think that's getting closer. It's getting closer. But it, it's still not an awesome shot. Um, this isn't bad, but it's not awesome either because what I want to see well, is the waterfall, stars, the waterfall but and the what I'm seeing is bright right, there. right here yeah. is the bright area. You've darkened everything all around the edges, which is good. Your post-production stuff, by the way, is, is good. Yeah. So your post is good. And this is just, it's kind of a boring shot. It's just, yeah, it's just not much. And, and now get, no, there's people watching. There accurate, are people watching that are going, I would love to take light, shots like that. Yeah, great light, technically accurate. Here's how I'm going to challenge you. You obviously have good post-processing skills. You're obviously a good photographer. I think you're a better photographer than the shots you're taking. I think that you can go out to maybe more interesting locations. And I think that there's a really good yeah. photographer don't inside you. Don't buy any more good. Don't buy, don't any, buy more any more gear. equipment. Don't buy another buy lens. Buy a plane ticket. Buy a plane ticket. Amen. Buy a plane ticket. Buy a plane ticket. There you go. Plane ticket's going to get you better pictures. All right, just a few more, and we're going to have to go. Ah, oh, crud! I gotta do the uh, the thing. All right. Um, I'm a sucker for spiral staircases, so I kind of like this one. Kind of half a spiral staircase. I think I'd like it better if I didn't see this this stuff on the left. Just crop it in to where you only see that. I think it's a stronger picture. Because I don't know what the other thing was giving you. Let's clear that crop and I'll show you. Like, does that really add to the photo? If it doesn't, it's taken away from it. Yeah. This is kind of nothing. Yeah. This is like cell phone picture Especially at the butcher. He's doing something, but and then there's, there's blurry that stuff in front of you. That kind of like you. Yeah. Man, we got to get off that foreground blur. blur. Yep. And I know you've seen pictures where it works. You, you got to step rare. like to the left or the right. All right, we're know. in London. There's the uh, oh, cell was, phone that building. That was from the last and one. It's same kind of thing. These are all kind of they're okay. They're okay. They're not bad. They're not good. They're just shots. They're kind of snapshotty. I I think you gotta. I, I think in your case, if I had to say. I would go, I would go look at, I would spend a lot more time looking at other photographers work. I really think this yours is a vision thing because your shots are all kind of, it's not a yeah. camera problem. It's not a post-processing problem. It's not that you have a bad black and white, just your, all your images are kind of shrug. No one's going to go, wow, There's the guy, the kid on the ladder with the moon, yeah, that was wow. Good. That kind of stuff makes that you go, good. wow, your shots, spiral staircase. Half, and then a guy in a store, and then some buildings that you see every day if you live in London. It's just not, nothing really there. All right, we're gonna, we got a couple more we're gonna have to wrap up. We're running out of time, but we're also running out of images that I thought to look. This photographer has the exact same problem the photographer yep. two back has. And by the way, that, that leaf just looks too placed. 
It does. Like it looks like you walked over there and said, and I applaud you for that, but it looks too much. It looks too placed. If you're going to take the time to place this, get rid of some of the ugly ones that are around. You know, it's just. Well, and then make it more. Or clone them out. Make it more prominent then. So yeah, like, get where down that's low. The subject where like yeah. like I don't know what the subject is here. It's yeah, it's a bit. Like, it's a bit it's messy. Mur but you you have the same murky. problem as the guy two back. It, yep, look, yep. it's another boat, boat. and it's like People your post processing is pretty good, but all the compositions are kind of meh. Like, there's probably a better composition in here. When you do a stream shot, it's got to be really clean. So, for example, I'm just going to tighten this up a little bit. Because you got a bunch of stuff in there yeah. that nobody cares stuff about. Stuff on the left, get yeah. rid of. Let's get rid stuff of all this left. stuff. And let's kind of, we could even come down here a little bit. Let's go in this area. <coughs> It's already a little bit better. Yeah, I think it's already a little bit better. It's not yeah. great better, but it's it's a bit better. I think it's but a again, really lost all that stuff on the left was just Yeah, the not there. stuff on the left isn't helping your ask you yourself is this it, is it um, helping your photo? It brought you towards that red yeah. leaf too. Yep. Yeah, you, you gotta okay, boy, we only have a can we go a few more minutes? We just got a few left. So um, We got the nod. All right. That's a bald eagle. Now, if it was a bald eagle on a really nice super blurry background, I think you'd have something. The light's a little harsh because, look, it's clipped up here. There's no detail. Yeah. So you actually went a little too far with your exposure. And I don't think you're going to be able to get that back in camera raw. What's going to happen is that's going to turn yeah, gray. No it's going to turn gray. So there's, a, there's a, a, an exposure mistake. You let the highlights get too bright. Those pixels are dead. If you were to print this, this would be just, there would be no pixels or detail here. It would just it's be a white, white piece of paper. That's not your biggest problem. <laughs> the biggest problem is that background. Hey, let's just see, Eric. I know we're, we're tight on time, but let's just see. If I took it to Photoshop, which I just did, if, hey, get me out of here. If I chose a, a uh, not select and mask, let's go to, why won't it give me the select subject? Select subject. Just going to see if it'll select that. All right, so yep. it selected the, the bird. I'm just going to give you an idea. This is not going to be awesome, trust me. This is but down and I, dirty. This is super down and dirty. Let's go blur that background. Yeah, it's it's. But you need this kind of separation. That's that looks like crap. But you but do you get the idea? Go back to the metadata. Uh, let's. Like it was there if in I Lightroom. was there metadata in Lightroom. Bridge. All right, let's go look. Uh, we're at f five point six. Now we're zoomed in tight, so here's what hmm. this tells you. Yeah, that, no. they were right up against it. The the bird's too close to the yeah, background. Yeah, that's what, it's right you up can't, against you, it. Because I think you used a pretty decent f-stop at yeah. 5.6. It's just right you used there. You used a 200 to 500, so that was all good. It's sitting in the grass, mm -hmm. and the grass yeah, is right you, behind it. Yeah, you can't it. really ask the eagle to move. They're really yeah. fussy about that. So uh, I'm going to give you three points off for burning out the top of the bird. But I think the separation is an issue. You, yeah. It's going to be hard to get around. You couldn't really get the separation given that situation. Alligator. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not crazy about it. And I'm having a hard time telling you why. But I don't look at it and go, ooh, I just go, alligator. Ugly, ugly ooh, bird. Vulture. Ugly vulture. The reason those things uh, eat that, the stuff they do. Yeah, ugh. this isn't. This would, this would be like showing a picture of a really, really ugly person and hoping that people would like it. This is a really, really ugly and bird. And you got the same clipping problem up here. It's yeah, and you're, you also, all that detail is gone. gone. Good catch. All that from about here on is just gone. And you even tried to fix it because it's turned gray. Yeah, it's turned gray. Yeah, yeah so I, on my screen, I can see that you did the high. If, you're, some, if you just have a negative exposure value, a lot of right. meeting. So look, you got a really, really ugly bird. You got a really, really ugly alligator. You have a beautiful bald eagle. You're close. Now, camera skills, good. Settings, I think your settings were right. You were Just all the way in. Underexposed a little bit more. Underexposed your highlights for both of them. Yep. And if you can get some separation on that eagle, I think you would, the eagle shot at least would be good. So we got a little bit of work to do. All right. And don't show people vultures. All right. Ooh, nice. Oof. Ooh, nice. You know what's nice about this, guys? Please look at this. 
It's simple. simple. Eric just said it. It's, it's simple. Bit, it's just so easy to see. Like, it's, look at how simple it is. It invites you in. The colors are warm. You the step from light one is rock good. to the, the next other, rock, to, to the, the next, background. to the stack. I think this and was... And then you go to the clouds. Everything's layered perfectly. Yeah, this is, this is really Beautiful. nicely done. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> this is not bad. That's this not is bad. this is that's, like that's killer. It. That's it. That's a killer shot. That's it. Maybe best that's shot it. of the day. Very very good. Very close. This to is it. nothing. I don't even know where to look. It's just foggy. And well, that this, one could be stronger with cropping too. Yeah, yeah that last one. But, this one. Yeah, because like the, you could crop in a little bit that stuff on the left, but it's still it's kind of being shaky. Yeah, but what are you looking shaky. at? It's just kind of everything. Yeah, it's gonna be shaky. It's not the first. The first. The first picture was from a different photographer. That photographer needs to come to the. All right. The okay. Table. All right. Let's see. We got three left and we're we're done. Oh wait, hold on. I got to go to camera. Ooh, I like oh, that. I love the Milky Way. Very nice. Looks like uh, Monument, Monument Valley. Monument Valley. Nice Milky Way. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm going to pass this to Eric because he's the Milky Way expert. Yeah. The only thing is there. I mean, and this could be a a, a aesthetic decision here but the milk the the sky is very green you know you've gone green with your sky um you've got all that light pollution there where if you yeah if you go over towards there that's natural that's starting to look natural plus two now you can see where the foreground as well when you did that adjustment the light did not look doesn't look so unnatural because those are probably headlights coming across or something that you've painted across the front there so um i think that it's good that you have the milky way kind of intersecting on that side of the frame kind of going into the uh the monuments over there so there's so, your there's your side by side yeah i mean the, the green is really what what throws me off yeah the first. green's green's kind of killing yeah you, you got to get your white balance that's the one thing with the milky way and I, I and i talk about that in the class it's like the first lesson is you know really how to nail your white balance because once you start nailing that white balance everything comes together you actually also if you would have done that uh, in the original file, you probably could have pulled out more detail in the Milky Way. Because if you nail your white balance with the Milky Way, you can pull out a lot more detail in that core area of the Milky Way down there. All right. But do you notice, guys, I went down a stop and a half to get it yes. into, it's overexposed too. But yeah, still, we still you got, like it's it. It's at night. It's, now that. This is a cool, cool shot. You know what? Print this on canvas. Oof. Would that make, a, you'd sell that, wouldn't you? Yeah. I love how none of it's cut off too. You know, you see like none of it's cut off. It's all so yeah, simple. Good shot here. Just fix some of the, the post processing. Balance. Really good really shot. Good Interesting shot, shot here. Yeah, a, a, a longer exposure would have really helped you here. Oh, it would have helped. It's still a nice shot. Still a nice shot. You, you know what? This is another one of those ones you could sell on a canvas. It's a little bit too punchy. I think I would take the vibrance back a little bit. Like, oh, hey, we're open here. But hey, Just, overall, those overall, are Overall, really nice. Pretty great Good stuff. Images. Pretty great. All right. Let me see where we're at. Who we at? How, how many we got left? We only got two left, and we're going to wrap it up. All right. Football. Okay. That's a football shot. Mm-hmm. That's a better football you, shot. You see, like with these, with the football, like uh, see the separation uh, where the background's out of focus, even on that yep. first shot. That's who we were yep. talking about earlier. And then uh, same thing there. This now, one's the ground is a little. Really yeah, I was going to say it's ground. a little tight on the ground, and but you know what more. it is. This it's it's not really a peak moment of action. Mm -mm. It, you're tackling a guy, and there's nothing. If he had a crazy look on his face, if he was reaching out, if he was in the air. It, it's kind of a, a pedestrian shot. All your settings are right. All your camera stuff is right. And you've got, uh, you can see the ball. You almost can see his eyes. It, it's not bad, but. Well, you know, and what's interesting is you might have a frame around there that has the ball a little bit more prominent because usually when a guy's getting tackled, he'll kind of yeah. drop the ball hey, as they yeah. go. Yeah, you know what, though? If it were me, and it is since I'm right here, I think I would go really tight on this. Yeah, you're going to lose the feet. I think we're going to lose gonna the feet. You're going to go up in here. And yeah. I think we're going to get something right up in here with a little room for the player to run. Hold on. A See, I think this is going to be a yeah. lot stronger shot right there. Mm -hmm. Now, think about where these shots are going to be used, right? So you're shooting an NFL game. Where is it most likely going to get shown? On the Internet. 
Yeah, detail. So if you're way out there, like on that other shot that captures everything, it's probably not going to make it. But that's nice and tight. I think that's a, a big difference from where we were a second ago. Let me clear that crop. <laughs> Say with football, if you think you're tight enough, you're not. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, technically done well, right? So none of that there. Um, this, I think, is the least one. It's just, it's not really a peak moment of action. It's, it's, it's uh, also hard in that situation where you have the stadium lit, or the stands yeah, lit, stands, and you're stands in the are lit behind you, uh, you're in shadow. the shade. Yeah, it's just, it's not super awesome. But this is another one that could probably, especially with the ref looking off to a, another area, it draws your eye here. Now, if that's happening, too, sometimes with a lot of stadiums, like I know Tampa Stadium, you can a lot of times just go to the opposite side of the field. Yeah, so, but if the player's can, going this way, yeah. if you're covering well, that, hey, that's like a much stronger picture. Look at that. Yeah, sometimes one side of the stadium is in shadow. Yeah, and I know. That happens in Tampa a lot. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's a much stronger photo, just getting in tight like that. I don't need to see their feet. Their feet weren't that, doing anything. That's now, way better. if you told me the feet were coming off the ground or they're jumping up in the air and the feet are part of the shot, but it, it's really not. But get I mean, in. Look at, they were at 400. Yeah, get in much. Shot. Right. Well, that's okay. We crop all day long. That's yeah. part of what you look in the in the in the room where everyone's yep. editing. This is a weird shot. So it looks like the 49ers and the Vikings. But what's I can't explain why it looks like high school kids. Well, there's For no some, logos. There's no logos, so you can't well, see a logo. Well, there's a San Francisco logo. Uh, yeah, no, maybe. but I mean, there's something about the shot. That oh, looks like they look like little kids. That doesn't look like like I didn't think this was a pro shot when I looked at it. Yeah, it just I don't know what it is. It looks like a high school game. Now here's what I do like. It is more of a peak moment of action, but not really. It's he's just evading a tackler. He might have stepped to the well, right. Crop it, crop it in like you did. Like lose the left, lose the yeah, right. I don't know that one's that one's not cropped as bad. Yeah, well, but lose the left, lose the right a little bit. Let me see what I would do if I was an editor doing this. Let me just go in first and see. Because if you crop off his hands, you're going to lose a lot of this. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we could get in like. That's not bad. Yeah. Or, I think I like that better. Yeah. That's a better chance of getting picked up by somebody. Definitely. But you, you lose his hands. But, and, but you also get, you still know he's low. I like that you can see the players. I think you got a cropping issue here. That's what it looks I like. I think you just get, get like crappy. Crop, like get crappy. Don't be afraid to crop in a lot. And he's at 550. That means he's using a 400 with a 1.4. So, yeah, and, but it's never, it's never tight enough. So get in tight. All right. So mm -hmm. that being said, you're, you're really good. So don't, don't take that. And here's the last one of the day. Let's end on that other one. <laughs> that was the last one of the day. Yeah, these are, I'm sorry. I hate to end on such a sour note, but this is kind of nothing. Sorry. A guy yawning. Sorry. Is he yawning or smoking? That's what's wrong yeah, with it. These is are you don't just, know what he's doing. Yeah, these are just like, there's people standing there. There's a guy smoking. There's some people's hands and they're not interesting hands. There's just nothing going, well, going we on Well, we have to here. give away some prizes. Let's give away. Go ahead and give them Yeah, them. so uh, we got to give away some prizes. So uh, the Platypod is going to go to Jamie Carter Durham. Uh, if you just go into the chat and uh, Christina will get your information, we'll send that to you. Uh, as far as the, the Platypod goosenecks, that is Lewis. I guess just Lewis. Lewis. Um, Lewis gets yeah. a gooseneck. And then Andrea... Uh, she wins the, which book? This book, the Elements book. So Andrea, uh, you're going to win the Elements book. And then Macarena is winning the Upside portrait. Down book. The Portrait book. Yeah, so there we go. So congratulations, Mac. It's a great book. And I saw there was a question there, just to answer it real quick. Jock's photo was asking, uh, with the rocket shots, how to determine if a rocket goes out of your frame. Uh, an interesting thing, we're going to be actually doing that in a class coming up. So we got approval to go out and actually teach people yes. how to do that. At the Cape. So a that's going to be really launch. cool. So I'll show you exactly how I plan all that stuff out. So very cool. Well, guys, we have run out of time. We got through a lot today. We cranked through them. Thanks, everybody. I, hey, I know that it is not easy having your stuff. Yes. And that's why yes. we, we do blind photo critiques, because we want to be able to kind of be honest with you. Uh, I will say this. I've gotten so many emails from people that said, 
Scott, I, I, I got a review on the grid and it was terrible and it was horrible, but I took to heart what she said and they sent me their new pictures and they're, they're night and day. I have, seen, I have seen seen photographers that you know that I'll start to follow, or the, well, they'll talk about this show, and then they'll go and you follow them on Facebook, and I've seen them over the year, just go from being like yep. one of those where it was like you need to do this, you need to learn composition, you're just taking snapshots to where they're now taking real awesome photos. So I think it's just part of it is just taking that in, learning from it. That's how we all learned. Yeah, we all learn that way. So. Yeah. So uh, I, I would give you a few things to wrap up just to take out of today. If you were one of those ones that got a bad critique, um, number one is don't let it bum you out. Let it, let it be something to build on. So, okay, I see where I'm going wrong. Don't go, oh, I'm not any good. No, don't do that. Just go, okay, I know which direction I need to go in. Uh, I will just, there were some themes today. Cropping was a big theme. A lot of photos showed areas and too much of stuff that wasn't interesting. Think about the staircase, the woman with the big fur hat, uh, some mm -hmm. of the last ones that we saw, all of the football shots. Um, yeah, cropping. We couldn't do it really with the, uh, the lacrosse shots uh, earlier because there was just so well, much going that's, on. That's sometimes separation yeah. too. Yeah. But uh, so separation was another thing today. Yep. Uh, a lot of folks um, could, could do with separation. Focus, making sure that the stuff in the foreground is yeah. in focus, you yeah. know, unless Don't. you're going to be that one out of a million shot that's going to work. It's hard to do. Uh, yeah. The other one was too much post-processing. We saw a number of mm -hmm. images today that were, where camera am I looking at? Oh, over there. Oh, hey. Hi. There you go. Uh, I'm like looking over there and I'm going, my head's turned the wrong way. Um, there were a lot of photos today that were overly yep. post-processed. So cropping, and don't then the, do as much post. And then, and then also the other one is just having something that's interesting. Like just don't go out and snap a shot. Like have something yep. in there that tells Eric's story. thing that said don't buy some gear. Yeah, don't buy some gear. Go travel somewhere. Buy go a do plane something ticket. Interesting. And then also the other thing that a word that comes up a lot in the good photos that I'm telling you we always say simple, simple. simple. You said it at the same time we get it five is, points. It is just. I have learned so much. Simplifying Simple. my frame, oh my gosh, that changes a lot. Yep, and I talk about that whole simplicity thing on my tour. That's yep. how important it is. I dedicate a whole section to it. Guys, we're way over, way, 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 way over, over time. time. Way over time. Uh, but uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks to my crew here because we're way over time. Yeah, we are way. Uh, we'll be back next week doing some stuff. I don't know what it is, but once the jib starts, you can, what yeah, is it? Yeah, Mark keeps... Oh, Mark Keeps is here. He's a Photoshop, a wizard, and a really good bass player. Both. Maybe we'll have so a we bring a bass. So there's that. Peace. <laughs>